Hello, welcome back to another stream. Today we're going to be having a look at armor hardeners and to see how effective they are at uh, preventing uh, damage or penetrations through to armor hardeners. Now, armor hardening works on weapons that penetrate your armor. So it reduces the effectiveness of that penetration. So it increases, I guess, the hardness of the armor. So the penetration, uh, well, I might say it pen the weapon penetrates 100% of armor, such as your focused arc meter. So there's 100% armor penetration. The 25% armor hardeners should negate that a bit. Same with Cloud Lightning. That's why we're using this type of ship. We're going to test out how the armor hardeners work. Uh, that's why I've deliberately left off this slot uh, and just put afterburners on this ship so that it will match with this ship, which I've left off these two slots so that we don't, uh, uh, you know, I guess, skew the battle one side or the other. Both fleets just have the one advanced afterburners for this test. This is just a baseline test. Uh, we're testing out max armor. Uh, and this is a combination of tachyon lancers, kinetic batteries, and some armor, which we've used really well in previous uh, videos. For a standard type artillery battleship, has been very effective in the past. So we'll test the baseline to see how effective the uh, armor penetration is. It'll be going straight through the hull, and then we'll do a video to t adding in armor hardeners and see the results to see how effective it is compared to the previous battle. So let's dive in and have a look. So we've got our two battleship fleets here. We've got our cloud lightning focused arc emitter fleet here, and then we've got our artillery battleship fleet here. So this is not a test to test the the optimal designs of what's the best weapon to counter arc artillery and cloud lightning. This is we're focused on armor hardeners and to see how much benefit you actually get from them. So let's see how this battle result goes first. Hostile fleet assets engage. These battleships opened up long range, all their kinetic artillery. There's all the uh, focused arc emitters, cloud lightning. These guys do have line computers on as well to close the distance to medium range, so they use all of their cloud lightning. You can see the uh, artillery battleships are dropping now. Look at their hull. We'll see the hull going right down. Let's just have a look at the damage here for a sec, just so we can see. You can see the focused arc emitters there doing a lot. Uh, the cloud lightning is doing nearly 10,000 damage. The damage to armor or shields because we're going straight through both. So you can see that focused arc emitter and cloud lightning. We've already done you know, 70, nearly 70,000 damage direct to the hull, while the kinetic artillery tachyon lancers uh, they've done what 22,000 damage to the hull there. Gamma lasers another 3,000 to 25, and while they're still chewing away on the armor and shields, this fleet is just obliterating their hull, going straight through everything. Even if they had shields and armor, it, would, it wouldn't really matter. They're just going straight through. You can see here they're dropping down. They've got the last few battleships. Last battleship. There you go. So that was a complete victory. We've lost four Arc Emitter battleships without the armor hardeners and the entire fleet. Has it been obliterated? How much retreated? So 10. 10 out of 21 battleships have retreated somewhere. Let's see if they'll pop up. No, they've just vanished. <laughs> okay, so we've seen how effective the arc emitter battleship is. This is why I like to use the focused arc emitter and also don't neglect cloud lightning. If you get the um, opportunity to get cloud lightning, take it. Very effective against uh, the unbidden contingency. You go straight for the shields and armor and you're going straight for the hull, so it's quite good. Just got to remember to tell your ships to close to medium range so you're using all of this don't stay at artillery range because otherwise you're not really using your full power of your fleet all right so let's change into armor hardeners and we'll see how that goes so now we've got our artillery battleships i've put in two lots of reactive armor so that gives us two lots of 25 percent armor hardening you do see there it does cost some uh, living metal so not the easiest uh, to get 
if you want the reactive armor but you can also use the reactive armor which gives you plus 15 percent to each of these if you don't have that available so i've just left the advanced afterburners in there no changes to the archimeter battleship i haven't filled anything in the slot i wanted to keep it completely the same so that we have a good comparison to the previous battle let's see how the armor hardeners effect we had 10 battleships uh, last time the only thing we have to factor in is that there is a bit of rng involved here because of the damage from 2 to 1690 and 1 to 106 so you can get varying results so let's just see how this goes all right let's see how this battle turns out now with the armor hardeners let's see if there's any difference at all hostile fleet assets engaged see we're already we're not losing as many ships although I think a couple have retreated ships seem to be retreating rather than dying oh we've lost a couple now numbers are about similar though actually they've lost one more now Who could be getting the upper hand? Let's just have a look at the damage output. The focused R committers, cloud lightning. So that's about, uh, it's at 59,000. Thank you, Lance. Focused R committers. Yeah, you can see there, damage to armor. The focused R committers are having to actually hit the armor and fight through it because of the armor hardness rather than going straight through it which we didn't have last time so we've lost 40,000 uh, points which would be going straight through to the hull so that's armor's actually being effective there you can see the armor is uh, getting whittled down a little bit there on our armor or artillery battleships armor slash artillery let's mm -hmm. keep going we've got looks like we've got the advantage at the moment Still pretty close certainly a lot more even fight though that's clearly uh, visible right now anyone's guess to who will win probably a little bit RNG involved here oh he might just lose now yeah okay so the fleets uh, retreated there so you could see that was a far more even fight uh, we have 14 artillery battleships still that retreated versus their 15. So very even fight, even though we lost the battle, we've only lost one more ship than they did. So that was uh, a complete reversal. The first battle was a far more decisive for the arc emitters and cloud lightning. And you can see, you can see the damage yourself when we looked at it, that the amount of damage the armor was now stopping with those armor hardeners. Let's try another battle and let's add in three armor hardeners. Let's add in a third one and just see if that actually makes a difference, if it's actually stacking effectively or if you're getting diminishing returns. Okay, so for this fight, we've got our artillery battleships. I've taken off the afterburners, so we've lost a slight bit of evasion and some speed, but we've got the extra armor hardening. And let's see how that impacts the fight, whether we can actually win it or if it is detrimental, might reduce our uh, combat capability. Let's have a look. You see they've lost a number of battleships already. We haven't barely been scratched. The battleships are dropping. I think we just have one retreat. like a lot more one-sided fight this is let's have a look at the damage tanking on lancers kinetic artillery yeah those focused arc emitters have dropped down the list 18,000 yeah you can see now we're up to 50,000 damage so it is stacking they're just not getting through their armor 
their armor is holding up. You can already see these, these ships are just dying faster because there's more ships firing at them and keeping more ships in the battle, dishing out more DPS. This is like a, this is a complete reversal. Yeah, there you go. So they retreated, they had eight fleets there, when they eight ships left. So that was a utter annihilation, pretty much. The artillery battleships with the three lots of armor hardening just proved too decisive against the Archimedes and Cloud Lightning. So we can see there that the armor hardeners are very effective, just like we saw in the previous video of the shield hardeners. They seem to be working as designed. So if you're coming up against people using lots of uh, penetration of shields and armor, you know how to at least mitigate it somewhat. Obviously, if people are coming at you with um, these weapons you, and you're running a combination of shields and armor, you might have to pick which way you want to go. Do you want to go all shields or all armor? That way you can stack the highest bonus on your battleships rather than trying to split saying, oh, let's have two armor and one shield. Go all armor and all reactive armor to mitigate that penetration. The only risk you have with going either all armor or all shields is your opponent could respond by upping their kinetic weapons to diminish your shields very quickly or go all plasmas and lasers and stuff to diminish your armor faster as well. They could put their you know, secondary weapons on like you've got here you've got some laser weapons or you could add in more kinetic if you want to get down those shields things like that so this fleet proved pretty effective even though um, we did have the kinetic artillery which was firing away at their shields and then they had armor so our lasers helped a little bit with that and then our tachyon lancers helped with that so this provided a good balance between knocking down shields and then whittling away at their armor and hull You've got the bonuses there, the armor and hull. So that was that seemed to be a quite a nice balance when you're up against a uh, fleet that has shields and armor combination that you need to get through both. So if you like this video, hit that like button. If you've got any comments or suggestions on how this could be done better, please send me a comment. Or if you've got any ideas and weapons you want tested. Um, I have tested and played around with auto cannons, uh, with on battleships and cruisers and bigger ships, and I've used them on destroyers and trying to fight carriers and everything. It just didn't seem very effective. I've used auto cannons in combination of lasers and plasmas and that to try to get a boat balance. It just didn't seem right. I think auto cannons are more for um, maybe fighting. Um, uh, you could fight frigates and corvettes with them. I suspect that's probably really their only usefulness. So, but I might try and test it a bit more because there are a few people have been commenting about auto cannons. So far, I haven't found an effective use for them just yet. Not without going to like the extreme, like getting nanite auto cannons. I'm trying to keep the technology what everybody can use. Nanites would be uh, one that only a very few would use at each game. All right. So, if you liked this result, we've seen the armor hardness very effective. Um, keep watching my videos for the next one I'll see you again next time